Welcome to this edition of ARTV News, I'm Tony Beauvais. In this show, Dark Matter at the University of Melbourne, a new performance at the Alex Theatre, ACCA's upcoming Open Glossary exhibition, The Art Hunter reaches 100 episodes with an exhibition in South Melbourne, and ARTV magazine with Morgan Ray. The world premiere of a new Australian play, The Life of Byron, is filled with laughter and pathos. This is a heartwarming exploration of family and the challenges of love, responsibility and growing up. The play sees the world through the eyes of one man as he struggles with one of the most important decisions he'll ever make. Comedian George Capanaris is joined on stage with award-winning actress Maria Theodorakis, who brings a sweet and tender theatrical experience and an ode to the extraordinary lives of a generation of migrants who made Australia what it is today. The Life of Byron is playing at the Alex Theatre St Kilda from October 11th to the 22nd and Sydney at the Fusebox Factory Theatre Marrickville in November. There is a lot happening at the Monash University Performing Arts, Alexander Theatre. This annual celebration of creativity with performances, collaborations and talks by acclaimed musicians and dancers from India, Singapore and Australia explores Indian classical dance and music with a focus on cultivating a new generation of artists creating new work and fostering cross-disciplinary collaboration. The Indian Performing Arts Convention returns on the 16th and 17th of September. Bell Shakespeare's Twelfth Night is directed by Heather Fairbin. This is a fresh retelling of Shakespeare's romantic comedy featuring all new music by Sarah Blasco. The Twelfth Night ultimately asks us to find light in the darkness and is on October 3. Sarah Blasco has received countless award nominations, ARIA awards, Triple J's Album of the Year and a Sydney Meyer Fellowship. She has performed with symphony orchestras, string quartets, electronic duos and makes up one third of the beloved Seeker, Lover, Keeper collaboration alongside Sally Seltman and Holly Throsby. You can see her performing on Friday the 6th of October at the Alexander Theatre. National Institute of Circus Arts, NICA, presents its second year student ensemble show, Within These Walls, at NICA National Circus Centre building in Paran. Within These Walls divulges into how we cope when the world around us suddenly changes and our ability to reframe our perspective to transform the ugliest of things into strangely beautiful expressions of the human condition. Expect feats of contortion and swinging aerials layered in remarkable acrobatic storytelling. Within These Walls is unravelled by a unique, dexterous and highly skilled cohort of second year students itching to thrill and surprise audiences with their debut performance. The National Institute of Circus Arts is on from the 12th to the 16th of September. Fuse is committed to showcasing all of the talent, creativity and art that the community of Darabin has to offer. Part of the Spring 2023 program is Fuse at Large, an open access multi-arts program where any artist, maker and creator can host an event under the umbrella that is Fuse, so long as it is happening in Darabin during the festival. Darabin locals and creatives alike will bear witness to performances never experienced before. From art exhibitions to audio-visual installations, festival goers will be spoiled for choice. Fuse at Large in Darabin is on from the 2nd to the 17th of September. Check the website for details. True to Life follows the work of the 17th century Dutch master, Rembrandt, from his early years in Leiden in the 1620s through to his final years in Amsterdam in the 1660s. The exhibition presents more than 100 etchings alongside paintings and drawings from the NGV collection and important loans from international galleries and museums. Across key themes including self-portraits and portraits, religious motifs, landscapes, news and genre scenes, the exhibition gives insight into the scope of Rembrandt's creative innovation. Throughout his life, Rembrandt often returned to favourite subjects with new perspective, constantly exploring the possibilities of storytelling through images. Rembrandt's True to Life is on at the NGV and finishes on the 10th of September. La Folly is the largest annual competition held for aerial artists in Australia and around the world. The aim of the La Folly competition is to provide a professional arena for aerialists to showcase their talent and support performers on their way towards a professional career. A folly competition will encourage further growth within the aerial arts industry. Prepare to be amazed by the breathtaking aerial performers spectacle that will leave you in awe. As they gracefully suspend high above, their artistry defies gravity, weaving a mesmerising dance through the air. The performers' strength, agility and poise create an enchanting visual symphony. 
Whether it's the graceful silks, dynamic trapeze, or daring rope acrobatics, the aerial performance spectacular is a true testament to the beauty and creativity of human movement. The La Folly Aerial Championship is at Gasworks on the 9th of September. Get ready to experience a groundbreaking fusion of music and dance as Metamuse takes the stage at Alex Theatre St Kilda. Created by the visionary choreographer Luca DiNardo, Metamuse promises an unforgettable journey that celebrates the essence of jazz while pushing the boundaries of artistic expression. It not only captivates with its innovative approach to jazz, but also pays homage to the rich history of the genre. Jazz, originating from African and African American influences, has evolved over time to become a dynamic and diverse art form. From its roots in African dance traditions to its development during the swing era and its incorporation into Broadway and film, jazz has continually reinvented itself by retaining its core spirit of freedom and self-expression. Metamuse promises to be a milestone in the evolution of jazz, capturing the essence of this beloved genre while weaving a captivating narrative that transcends boundaries. Audiences can expect an evening of sheer artistic brilliance, where movement and music unite in a mesmerising display of creativity and passion. Metamuse is at the Alex Theatre in St Kilda from September 20th to the 23rd. Fitzroy Street in St Kilda used to be an extremely popular destination, attracting visitors to its many restaurants, clubs, bars and shops. But over the years, a steady decline in its patronage has left many failed businesses, resulting in empty shops. Renew is an initiative that's aimed at helping the street look alive again, and art has not been left out to bring new life to the street. So Renew is activating empty shops, um, but instead of a lease, it's a license process, so it doesn't affect your land values or your rates or anything like that. And it's about bringing creatives to a street to have a commercial type business where they can explore their ideas, expand their business, while at the same time providing benefit. Um, it's easy to lease your shop out when you've got neighbours, then when you've one shop amongst many empty shops. That's just one side, the light's been on at night time, bringing more people to the street, exploring a daytime trade where we haven't had a daytime trade for a long time apart from services. I think that every street has its own character that we need to honour but there's some ideas that say if there's a high level vacant shops what we've done in Fitzroy Street has been very successful. Included with the new tenants are two galleries, Russ Kitchen Studio and Leadbeater Gallery. Only a few doors from Enza Ben and Cars's gallery and the Pride Centre Gallery. Art has certainly contributed to attracting new investment in the street buildings that are proposing to be put here and that would be both from a residence point of view up top, some new shops in the street, just that new the revitalization of those sites but also there are small projects, grants that they've uh, applied for for the, the council to just little projects here and there just fill in and lift the area. I love new investment on Victoria Street so that's I mean a few years ago I don't think those people would have invested in the street but now they see a future and, and putting big money on the street, I mean, talking about blocks of land bought for $20 million plus, they, they are seeing a future in this street, which is great to see. Well, I'm really excited for Fitzroy Street. Not only does it already have a great reputation, it has such potential, and I think it's a fantastic place to live, work, and have fun. Remaining true to its long-standing tradition, ECA, or the Australian Centre for Contemporary Arts, once again presents a diverse contemporary exhibition for its art-loving audience, the Open Glossary. Open Glossary is an artwork by James Newin, created in collaboration with a group of curators. It examines the politics of language, cultural exchange, activism and belonging through dynamic installations, videos, performances and events across the galleries at ECA. One of the central features of this installation is the inclusion of hundreds of white shirts that fill Eka's main hall. This creates a sensory and immersive sculptural work that explores the language of contemporary art and its wider societal implications. The structure forms an intimate space where the public can engage with the experiences of belonging and non-belonging 
as perceived by a range of LGBTQI plus migrants who are recently resettled in Australia. Adjacent to the open glossary lies its counterpart in the neighbouring gallery space named a queer glossary. This is a collaborative multilingual translation project of queer terms by non-English speaking LGBTQI plus community members for the community. The combination of ECA's historical legacy, high quality art and open glossaries multilingual discussions on a variety of contemporary issues including gender diversity and sexual identity, this exhibition promises to be a unique and profound piece of art. For more information, visit the website of Australian Centre for Contemporary Arts. The University of Melbourne is featuring the groundbreaking exhibition Dark Matters, which unravels the mystery of dark matter through an immersive fusion of arts and science. Developed in collaboration with Arts at CERN and the ARC Centre of Excellence for Dark Matter Particle Physics, this exhibition is the first Australian partnership with the globally acclaimed Arts at CERN program. Dark matters emerge from the unique combination of creativity and particle physics, bringing together artists and scientists to delve into the unfathomable world of dark matter. Curated with Monica Bello, head of arts at CERN, the exhibition showcases a collection of novel arts and science explorations that grapple with dark matters in tangible and perplexing nature. Some of the artworks that endeavour to redefine our understanding of reality include Chroma V by the South Korean music producer and artist Yoon Kool Kim. The giant 50 metre long sculpture folds in on itself in an intricate knot made of metal and materials derived from techniques Kim explored in collaboration with material scientists. When accelerators turn to sweaters by the Lithuanian artist Julie Jonas Old Bonus, ethereal networks replicate CERN's large Holdren Collider. Inspired by quantum magnetic levitation, this mesmerising display turns scientific concepts into a captivating spectacle. And Mystery Box by the Australian collaborators Dr Viyam Sharma, comedian Lawrence Leong and magician Don Chambers. This enchanting and thought-provoking interactive display steps you into a world of wonder as you're invited to decipher the enigmatic contents of a captivating arcane aquarium. Dark Matters is an admissible exhibition that blurs the boundaries between art and science. Don't miss out on the chance to explore the captivating complexities of dark matter and the universe it inhabits. The exhibition closes on the 12th of December. For more details, visit the Science Gallery Melbourne website. Hello, David. Hello. Would you please tell us about The Art Hunter? Okay, The Art Hunter is a weekly show on Channel 31, screening prime time, 8 p.m. on Sunday evenings. Mm -hmm. And it's a one-on-one -on -one interview, like we're doing now, a one-on-one -on -one interview with a different artist every week from all aspects of the arts, from opera to ballet to film to theatre to visual art. So we cover all the aspects and people that are involved in it, as in artist or people that run the organisations as well. So we get a, a real insight of what the mm -hmm. arts is all about. Oh, that's great. So I believe Art Hunter has completed 100 episodes? Well, we're almost there. Almost we're almost there? to 100, <laughs> uh, which is amazing because we never in our wildest dreams ever thought that this would happen, mm -hmm. that we would actually get to 100 episodes. We started it off, you know, like a simple, uh, interview show and it's really blossomed into something really special and yes we're coming up to our hundredth show wow it must be an exhilarating feeling <laughs> it's, it really is and also because my co-producer uh, Simon who's you know, a strange person <laughs> uh, he actually said to me a couple of months back hey, we're getting close to 100 episodes. And I went, really? And of course I knew where we were. We were up to about 80 or something. And you just don't realise that it snuck up over yep. time that all of a sudden here we are, 100 episodes. That's great. So I heard that you are doing an exhibition and would you please tell us about that? Yeah, well, in celebration of the 100 episodes, we're going to have a, a few uh, celebrations, but one of them because I want to, my, my main reason I do The Art Hunter is to support the arts. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought, what better way to support the arts with our 100 show 
is to actually have an exhibition where I give five visual artists the opportunity to be part of an exhibition. And I've personally asked five, five um, artists who do a lot of architectural uh, work within their practice, not totally, but a lot of their practice has got a lot to do with architecture. Uh, one's a graphic designer, another one is a uh, pen on paper, does all this fine work, it's absolutely incredible. Another one's a photographer, and then we've got a couple of um, artists who, who are painters who do quite abstract versions of, yeah. say, the city of Melbourne. So that's quite a variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, a, a really good and it will, will give them an opportunity. They're, they'll be limited on how many pieces yeah. they can have in it. But people will come to this exhibition and then go away. And, well, well, I'm interested in, in this artist. Let me go and discover what else I can uh, find out about this artist and give them an opportunity to sell product um, on top of all their own personal exhibitions and all that that they do. And the exhibition is called Sidivus, and that is an actual Latin word for architecture. Oh. Uh, yeah, so yeah. that's the name of the exhibition. So, you know, pr pretty exciting stuff. So is it just going to be the exhibition or are you going to interview the artists as well like you do in the Art Hunter? Uh, well, on the opening day, we will be, uh, I'll be there and we'll actually do a little bit of an interview yeah. with each of the artists. But on the whole, people will generally just arrive and check out the exhibition. Sometimes the artists will be there, so therefore they can chat to the artist. And the, the really lovely thing is that one of the artists has a gallery. Mm -hmm. So, which is really lovely, and so therefore the exhibition is in her gallery, and um, and and it's really lovely because it makes it that personal touch as yes. well. And and her name's Marie Cooty, and she actually came up with the Art Hunter name, and the actual image of the Art Hunter as well. Um, so therefore, how fitting that this exhibition should be at mm -hmm. her gallery. I'm your host, Morgan Ray. Joining us from the Mars Gallery is Belle Basson, an experimental visual artist. Welcome to the show, Belle. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start right where um, we met, which is in Mars, and you have your exhibition. And this was, it's a, it's a body of work that covers sculpture, painting, um, even video. Mm -hmm. How did that even start? Like, Okay, so um, this body of work um, actually started three years ago. So um, th there's sort of a break because of COVID, but that generally a body of work is about two years or so for me. Um, and it started, it actually started with this question about how images arrive in the mind of artists. So I was sort of looking at some early female abstractionists which quite funny, there's like a Hilma F. Klimt show on at the moment at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. And she was one of the artists I was looking at where a lot of early female abstractionist artists, um, their practices have this sort of uh, tangential relationship to form. A lot of them have like spiritualist practices that they were sort of merging together. And so I felt like in that experimental space between kind of spiritualism and the envisioning of sort of forms in art practice, you kind of sort of have this little world where a whole lot of these artists were trying to kind of have relationships with forms. Like, so if you think about that mental space, it's kind of a bit hard to talk about, but like either we're trying to imagine something or something is arriving from outside of us, like whichever way that it's happening in this body of work, wanted to try and preserve that ethereal kind of nature of a form. And so I basically continually approached, so like a form that's arriving behind me right now, um, I continually approached these forms like in a range of different media. So I sort of tried them as choreographies and as sound scores and as drawing, like drawing's probably the first kind of point in my practice where I'll do lots of sketches. I first tried it on a train station in Greece with a few other artists. And then eventually I sort of brought in more collaborators and we took it to Bunnings and because um, it just kind of felt right at the time. So 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> From Greece to Bunnings. So yeah. obviously it started um, before COVID, like you said, three yeah. years ago. when you could leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then landed in Bunnings. And then you actually had some time to, to work on this. And what you see behind me is a little yeah. bit of all yeah. the process. Yeah. So I basically, like I have this huge process where I just keep drawing and just keep reimagining the work. And actually sort of at a halfway point I showed the work at Temperance Hall in a much more kind of experimental way where I had performances happening every 11 minutes and sound scores kind of going off in the space um, and when I was showing it there I kept running to Bunnings to repair things like <laughs> like to get more nuts and bolts and then while I was in, in Bunnings I was like oh I actually really love this space like something about those aisles I was like oh it kind of made me you know that feeling when they play really good music in like a shopping center or yeah. something and you want to dance? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was basically that where I was like, oh, actually, I really want to dance in this space. And so I sort of moved the girls, um, these three dancers that I was working with and um, Pru Lang, a choreographer that I was working with as well. Um, yeah. And we went to Bunnings and quickly filmed it there and they were very kind to us. <laughs> and like, allowed us to shut down the aisle. So it was really nice. Yeah. I, I love that mix of art in unexpected spaces, mm. such as, as a hardware store. Yeah. And then uh, you used like this form and traced it and it became, well not traced it, but you explored it and it became that um, painting that we kind of saw going around on the graphic. And yeah. it, it's such, once you explain that to me, um, I, I, it, I did connect further with your work. I mean, no, yeah. being in um, the public space, like when you filmed these, what were some of the reactions? Um, so Bunnings was great. Like um, they're sort of, this is the most like, um, like visited aisle, the nuts and bolts aisle. And so, um, there was a crowd of people by the time we'd finished filming. I think we only filmed for like 20 minutes, but it caused um, a, a big crowd who were waiting to get their nuts and bolts and they all were really positive about it. They were all kind of hugging and when I turned around there was all these kind of couples hugging and watching like a contemporary dance piece, which was quite beautiful oh, and wow. the guys that ran the aisle were like, well, we've never had anything like this in the aisle before. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and it, uh, well, at the train station in Greece, we got kicked out. So that's kind of like, which is a quite a normal thing. Like mm. we, um, another artist, Nathan Gray, filmed for us. And so he was on the other side of the platform. And we'd sort of got halfway through the shuffle when a train went by. And then suddenly he was like, I hope you enjoyed that because we have to go now. <laughs> 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 Not when you want. <laughs> I love train stations and places like that because I find them so cinematic, but I've been kicked out of a lot of them. But they let us keep our footage, so I was quite happy. <laughs> like, yeah. when, in some ways. Yeah. yeah. You've created all this work and then you are kind of restrained to yeah. what can be shown, but you, you know, giving a sampling of this body of work, what you're capable of, the ideas. Um, it's, yeah. it's quite strong. And I love how you met, you could see this, you know, having the performances. You mentioned this other, um, I guess, body of work that you're starting. Is that yeah. what's next for you or what should we yeah. look for? I was in New York. Um, I did a residency at ICP um, just um, before we all had to race home. And um, I got really interested in my Jewish heritage, which isn't something that I have ever kind of explored because I'm not usually um, interested in kind of identity um, politics too much, like I um, in my own practice. Um, yeah, but while I was in New York, there's other Jewish artists there, and I was like, there was just this sense of some kind of um, like family connection there. And then, um, so I've been talking to the and then this other project came up with the Holocaust Museum. And so I've been sort of lightly looking into things, which it's a hard subject to explore because um, because of the kind of uh, Holocaust stories in my family. I think there's um, some aspect of avoidance of like wanting to go that deeply into some of the traumas. And there's also, um, yeah, it's kind of a hard one because like there's a there are holocausts in many different cultures. Being an Australian person, like so many friends of mine from different cultures that have all suffered different things, and it's not something that I've really wanted to explore before. But I think also having a seven year old daughter that like is interested herself, that's kind of made me look more into things. So I've been kind of um, drawing and kind of hearing family stories and 
have been planning out these kind of uh, drawing based works that are sort of these large grids, which is something that I used to do earlier in my practice where I'd do these large sort of grids of um, like really large drawings that I used to call obliteration drawings, where it's just kind of very fine detail in, across these huge grids. Um, so it sort of relates back to those works. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sorry if that's a bit everywhere. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it's, it's quite an yeah. interesting journey and um, really relevant to what's going on now. So um, we'll see what, where that carries yeah. you. Yeah. So. If you'd like to contact us and let us know about any live event coming up in the inner Melbourne region, please email us. See you next time.